welcome to livealittlehigher.com and to the new month of Tam Tammuz. So who is Tammuz? Why is this month named like this? Such a weird name. So Tammuz actually, according to Maimonides, was um, a Mesopotamian a false prophet who was killed, tortured to death by the king of that time and his followers invented a story that the gods had come from the heavens and they had crowned him and they had taken him up to heaven. After this, there was a play that was enacted in his honor and according to the prophet Ezekiel, he recounts how in the times of the temple, in the summertime, they used to uh, make this show outside of the temple gates and they used to erect um, a figure, an idol of Tammuz in which his eyes were made, made out of lead and the summer, the heat of the summer month would melt this lead and he would cry black tears and this would become very tragic and the Jewish women used to love to go and see this play and cry and um, become depressed. So, so this, what is teaching us <clears throat> is that Tammuz actually is a parasite that still lives till today in our lives, in which human, there's a human, human tendency for people to drown themselves in self-pity and depression and to look at life in a tragic place, in a tragic way. If you don't believe me, look at the news. Every night, look at the news. It's so tragic. And everything that the world shoots at you is tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. And so this tragic environment just makes our brains tap into this way of thinking. And it takes away the life force and the vitality and the happiness of a human being. And um, the best way to get rid of it is is by recognizing that depression and loss of faith in life is a form of idolatry. It's a way in which we tap into a different reality. Really, Enod Milvado, the only thing that exists is Hashem. So if everything is God, we should never tap into this way of looking at life. Even if things look hard and look ugly from the outside, we have to be able to tap into the inside. And this is why the sages allowed the, the, the month to be called after a um, uh, Babylonian deity because they knew that in the, in the most darkness you can find the, the, the biggest light. In our biggest challenges in life is when we can really outshine. So, so we learn from this and we remember the meaning of, of that to follow Hashem really is to choose life. And uh, how do we choose life? We choose life by following Torah and mitzvot and connecting to that truth, plugging into Hashem's world. And when we're plugged into that, then no negativity and, um, and darkness can really come into our lives. So the stone that rules this month is the ruby. And the ruby is, uh, as you know, is a beautiful gem, it's red in color. And red is very seductive. It's a very seductive color. This was the gem that was put in the breastplate of the Kohen um, that ruled the tribe of uh, Reuben. And uh, this uh, red is enticing, like passion. If you look at red, you think passion, sin, sinful, right? So uh, this month, the 17th of Tammuz, really, it, it's when the Jewish people did their greatest boo-boo, which was uh, to uh, worship the golden calf. And uh, from the 17th of Tammuz, Tammuz till the 9th of Av, so it's three weeks in which we fall into a time of mourning and sadness because many, many calamities happened to the Jewish people in those days, uh, especially on the 9th of Av, when the two temples were destroyed. So the, the masal of the month is um, cancer. In Hebrew, it's known as sartan. And sartan also resembles the crab or the disease, God forbid. And the word sartan can be divided in two, in which sar means to remove 
to remove and to clean the negativity. And tan means uh, chaos, hatred, animosity, everything that comes to be negative in this world. And the power of the month really is to remove any negative situations that might cause this disease. <coughs> in a way, this, um, this, uh, there's a spiritual sense of sight of Tammuz, which is the ability to see through the physical reality into the divine source. So the power of the month is uh, encapsulated incredibly in its name. And it is that by removing ourselves from our egos, from letting go of our body, we're able to tap into our neshama. Because really people who fall into negativity, depression, um, self-pity, this, this is very selfless, selfish, I'm sorry. It, it's, they're all day thinking about themselves. That's why they become like that. When you're not thinking about yourself so much, you don't get so depressed. When you're, you're, you're busy working or doing kind things for other people, you're doing kindness, you're helping others, you're giving of your time, you're giving of yourself, you're helping, you're doing, then you don't have time to think if you're happy, you're not happy. This happens when we're, we have too much time for, for ourselves. When we have all this time for us, that's when this negativity starts coming into our minds. Also, the, the letter that rules this month is the letter uh, Het. And the letter Het is the eighth letter of the Jewish alphabet. And you know number eight is uh, infinite. So it's a transcendent letter. It's to transcend. It's to tap into a higher realm in which you, you have no control. Like we come up to here. This is as much as we can get and as much as we can understand and as much as we can know. And faith really is to jump over that and just connect to Hashem and believe in Him and trust in Him. So the, the letter Het also is the letter that is used in the word Haim, which means life. And, um, and, uh, and the first place that the letter Het appears in the Torah is with the word Hoshech, which means darkness when God created dark and light. And the, in the deepest darkest, darkness is the deepest light is contained. That's where the light of Messiah is hidden. And our whole job in our life is to reveal that light, is to take away the darkness and bring the godliness, to bring the light into the world. So from the form of the letter head, if you know it, it's like a gate and through which one may pass in order to per perceive a new reality. So in a, for us to be able to get rid of our old perceptions, our habits, the way we look at life, we have to transform ourselves. We have to transcend. We have to be able to, to conquer our, our natural selves, our instinctive selves, and be able to tap into Hashem's ways. And when we're able to tap into the seven sephira, seven emotional attributes, of God, which are Hesed, Gevura, Tiferet, and so on, and we're able to tap into them and work with them according to the right way which the Torah teaches us how to be, then in which we are emulating Hashem, then we're able to transcend ourselves and not live a life in which we live by our instinct, our instinctive nature like animals, but we're able to transform it, we're able to to conquer it, to, to harness it, and be able to do what Hashem wants from us. And this is the biggest power a human being can have. This is the, when you're able to conquer that part of yourself and not live yourself into what you think, you believe, I like, I, me, 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 but in, you're living your life of what does God want from me, what is the right thing to do, what does the Torah say, and it's not about you, that's when you're able to conquer that part of, of, of darkness. And so the, the tribe of this uh, month is Reuben. And as you know, the, the root of Reuben is to see. And again, here we're reminded how important it is to correct the way we see life, the way we look at things. Everything is in our eyes, in the way we perceive everything. And we can retrain ourselves. We can learn to really conquer that part of us of negativity 
and change it into positivity. And if you see something that you don't like, like look at the good in it. Try always to find the good in everything. When you're training your mind to look at the good, then the bad, the darkness will just disappear. It won't exist because you don't see it anymore. And this is the power of the month of Tammuz. And the, the sense of this month obviously is the sight. And we have to guard our sight. We have to be very careful what we look at and how we look at and, um, and be very, very careful with our eyes, especially in this month. And the end of, uh, and the end of Moses' blessing, uh, before he died, he said to the Jewish people, Betak badad en Yaakov. Sure alone is the eyes of Yaakov. So, sure is an acronym for Beta. Beta means Braha Tov Haim, which means blessing, good, and life. So Moses, before he passed away, he gave us this Braha in which we have to look at everything like Yaakov with blessing and with a good eye. And this is the meaning of sure, sure, all, all are is the, the eye of Jacob. Sense of the Jewish eye is to only see what is Abraham, only to see what is Beta, only to see God's blessings. And we have to really learn to see things in this way. And in this way, we will be able to conquer all that negativity in our lives. And to finish off, the organ or the controller that rules this month is the right hand. <clears throat> and as we've explained before, the right hand is hesed, which is kindness, love and kindness. And in reality, this is the antidote to depression. When we make our lives a life of hesed, of giving, of, of helping others, of living a life where we can be uh, uh, useful, and have purpose and meaning in our lives with kindness, then we're being able to shed away that part of us that drowns us down. When we're so worried about ourselves, we're really shifted to being worried about others. And in this way, we will be able to see the good in everything and be able to live in a beautiful, happy way, regardless of what's going around you. So I want to wish you a very, very beautiful month. It's, um, it's a hot month. It's a sweaty month. It's a uh, part of the month. It's not an, an easy and happy month where we remember uh, things that are not so happy. But at the end of the day, we should always remember that in the deepest darkness, you can find the most beautiful light. So I wish you a uh, Rosh Chodesh Tov, Tamuz, and uh, live a little higher. Thank you. <laughs>